Hello friends, I'm Moom and today we dive in the fantastic world of Project Bluefin. Now, it is a relatively new distribution but it is based on Fedora Silver Blue maybe, an imitable base and it is the brother of a very popularized distribution, Bass I2S. Now, just imagine, Bass I2S was designed to be like an alternative to Steam OS, but just imagine that same project was converted into proper distribution for developers, enthusiasts like me, creators, someone who wants a proper desktop. Not just the Steam OS interface, but a proper desktop. Well, this is it. And in this video, we're going to dive deep into it. So let's get started, shall we? So this is the amazing website of Project Bluefin. And the thing which I like the most about it is that the presentation is just awesome. And most importantly, the three different variants. You have LTS, GTS, and just normal Bluefin. Now, this is the stable branch, the really stable one, where you won't be seeing any issues at all. While this is just long-term support, way too serious. It's gonna be a little outdated, but you will enjoy this. But what I'm going to do is to install this one. The normal Bluefin because it is the latest of the greatest and it has the latest NVIDIA drivers and latest GNOME 48.4 based on Fedora 42. And not just that, they're just so damn amazing. And don't worry, I've already installed it, SOTA. I've already created a proper ISO GNOME boxes virtualization. So I'll be able to show you everything exactly how it is. So let's dive deep in, shall we? Now the first impression is that really awesome. Like when you go to install Bluefin, it's going to be using the Anaconda's web UI installer. To be honest, this is the perfect way to install Linux. You get the same thing on Fedora and Ubuntu. And this is directly from the Silverbrew edition. Now, the best part I like about this operating system is that it's immutable. Let me just show you. Here you have all the applications which you're gonna need out of the box. Very nice. But what I'm searching is softwares. Well, you don't have GNOME software, you have Bazaar, even better. Now, this operating system relies on flat paths for most of the applications. And that is the best way. I've been talking about this for almost a few months now. But even more, this is very stable and refined edition. Like, when you open this beautiful bazaar, it is properly customized for the whole operating system by default. And this is the best way to install any application. For example, if you want to install Google Chrome, there it is. Just like that. And for developers and my fellow Linux companions, I'd like to show you something else. Let's open terminal for that. Just take a look at this beautiful terminal. Really nice. I wanted to show you this. Like, really man, it's just beautiful. I want to know, how do they do this? Like, how? You have the Project Bluefin stable version, but it is right now locked because we are on live USB ISO. And here you have the latest Linux 6.14 kernel, the Fedora edition. And it knows that right now I'm using GNOME boxes. That means it's going to be a virtualized environment. So, you have Spice region tablet GPU support out of the box. That's why the rendering is just so smooth like I'm doing it on a normal hardware. Even if it's just a normal virtualization machine. Well, why don't we explore it, shall we? Let's take it calmly and go on to this because we have a lot of wallpapers. I was wondering which which wallpaper should I use for the thumbnail? Well, the Project Bluefin name suggests it has to be blue. But there are some other good ones as well. Okay, this is actually beautiful. But to be honest, I'd like to suggest a few things. Like you have this art menu here of a suit. Where you have shortcuts to containers, terminals, extension, system monitor. Well, I remember it was using maybe mission control as system monitor, wasn't it? Yes, I knew it. Let's make it a little larger to make it look beautiful. Well, it is quite heavy. As of now, it's using 3.5 GB. But that is the cost of using a virtual machine and then an immutable distribution. Because on an immutable distribution, it heavily relies on containers. Just like here, you see, there are multiple containers running over this operating system. You can turn all of them off. It will drop down to around 1 GB and then just use flat paths in your day-to-day -day life. It will be really, really good. Well, to be honest, it is pretty nice and beautiful. But I'd like to suggest the developers a few things which they should consider. For example, I know they're using 
well, they're actually heavily relying on GNOME extensions, where they talk about this blur, which sort of looks good, but doesn't. And especially this dash to dock, they have to fix this. It, it's definitely not looking good. There are better options, but let's just move on from that, because we have a lot to cover in this video. Okay, so I just turned off a few containers, but yes, there are a few going on right now. But now I was able to decrease my RAM usage by a small amount, but it's pretty massive to be honest. Just like here. But yes, you have firmware support, which means you can install dedicated drivers for your GPUs and other jump other hardwares, which are sort of proprietary. And then you have Distro Shelf, the place from where you can actually manage your containers. And then we have a lot of other stuff as well for example warehouse yes a lot of user users who complaining like let's say they install vdroid for playing android games on pc but they don't have keyboard and mouse support well looks like you do now with input remapper well it was originally designed just to change and create macros but yes it will get the job done okay then we have tweaks and yeah as expected they have not changed much but then yes they have heavily customized the desktop i've created better by myself but then what is this refine i have seen this in gnome software store but i've never used it by myself most probably it is just a normal gnome tweaks refinement where you can do a lot of other stuff other than just tweaking but it is still far short with extension but yeah to be honest this is a deep pretty build for an awesome just like it was supposed to be. Now, I'm just trying to create a proper way to, you know, grab a screenshot so I can use it in my thumbnail. Maybe this much? Yeah, maybe. All right, then. This looks better. Yes, I'm going to grab a screenshot from hell. Definitely not like that. Well, I'll just grab it from PLC. But yes, this does look good. And yeah, I believe that if for today's video, I just wanted to show my first impressions because I've never tried Project Bluefill. This is mostly for those developers who want a very stable but immutable distribution for the daily, daily work. Let's say, let me just show you. Here you can see the applications are our flag packs. You need zero maintenance because it doesn't have that original Linux base. It's immutable. And then you have included GPU drivers in the ISO. And it is particularly made for developers. It has homebrew, then containers and VS Code and DevBot out of the box. And they've clearly stated that they're just working it for most of the professionals. For example, the LTS version, it's for professionals and AI ML engineers. While GDS, this is for people who want a really stable distribution, like really stable. While the normal Bluefin, which right now I have, is mostly for enthusiasts like me. And then they have multiple things. Well, I wonder what this tryout means. Yeah, it just gives us an ISO but if you want a proper like proper setup with this then you're gonna need to install it and yeah that reminds me it's a part of Universal Blue project okay they have multiple ISOs even Basite OS is a part of this we have Aurora, Basite and Bluefin, Yuko these are the top ISOs they have or the top projects and Basite is extremely popular with among Linux enthusiasts who want to play games and a team was like desktop and interface on the gaming PC. And even ETA Prime loves this one. So yes. And today we were actually exploring this one, Project Bluefin. Maybe next time I should go on with Basite. And then Aurora. I've already covered three of them, three of these already. But the new updates are just way better. And there yeah, they've clearly stated it based on Fedora's immutable base. And that is something which makes everything so stable and seamless. And yeah, the website is pretty nice. Well, I believe that's it for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for future videos. And I'll meet you next video. Till then, I'm Moon signing out.